Tonight in Florida, residents are still picking up the pieces after Hurricane Nicole earlier this month and Ian earlier this year. While the storms are now long gone, the damage to our coastlines in some cases will be permanent. Can anything be done to save some of our country's most beautiful beaches? Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z files this in-depth report. The transformation of our coasts is constant. From Hurricane Nicole clawing away at the shore in Daytona Beach, homes crumbling into the sea within 12 hours. Nicole is still just a tropical storm. People say still, but there are always unique fingerprints from each of these. To the surge of Hurricane Ian swallowing Southwest Florida's barrier islands. Well, the storm surge is flexing. We're about an hour into being in this eye wall. Uh, the storm is moving north of us, but we see these winds and that little house that we were talking about all day has gone succumbed to the storm surge. Now the blue roof is all that's left floating in the water toward the building. Erosion is part of Earth's natural cycle and an increasing reality in some of the country's most visited beaches. Human-induced climate change has amplified the pace of rising sea levels, which magnifies the pace of erosion. It all happens faster when supercharged storms repetitively gnaw at the beaches. We are surprised that we normally don't get hurricanes here, and now we've gotten two pretty strong ones, so it's been shocking for us. Krista Goodrich is the property manager for several homes in Daytona Beach. She watched her coast disintegrate in just 44 days. Yesterday, this property right here had a backyard about 30 feet. We lost 30 feet for Ian, but then the rest of it collapsed this morning while we were evacuating the owner. As we were moving furniture to get it away from the back of the house, we were watching the backyard just crumble. The path of Nicole and Ian eerily similar to 2004 when Hurricane Charlie and Jean crisscrossed that state. But the coastline has changed a lot in the last 18 years. Daytona Beach has seen a sea level rise of a foot in the last century. But by 2100, they'll see almost four times that. So warming our planet faster is correlated directly to the sea level rise and then erosion? Yes, sea levels controlled uh, by both the temperature of the water so it is getting warmer, warmer, but also by the melting of the ice sheets and ice, ice glaciers. And both of those contribute by putting more water into the oceans. While sea level rise is not equal at every beach, the United States is projected to see an average of more than a foot in the next 30 years. That's more than it went up in the last century. When we see, okay, a foot by 2030, a foot of water, so what? Remember, on a beach, if you have sea level rise a foot, it's going to go 300 feet in. Rutgers professor Ken Miller says it's simple. Higher water means more erosion. Why did we build right on the edge of the ocean? Who wouldn't want to live here? Most coastal communities survive on beach tourism. And of course, without a beach, you don't have tourism. Enter a costly man-made process called beach nourishment. It happens at almost every single beach that you see sand from Maine to the west coast of Florida and some parts of the Gulf. Sand is taken from offshore and pulled onto the beach. Sunset Beach here, this nourishment project will cost $12 million. The federal government spends $150 million every year to nourish the beaches around our nation. So within the last four or five years, yes. you've lost how much beach? Um, probably uh, about 100, 120 feet or so. Pinellas County, Florida has seen a half foot of sea level rise in the last 50 years, every inch making every wave more destructive. Now, if our beaches disappear, the economic impact would be devastating. These beaches are really Pinellas County's brand, and that brand is about a $9 billion economic engine that's driven by the 15 million tourists that come and visit us every year. And that also supports 90,000 jobs. So there's a big emphasis on the return on investment. Okay, off we go. So you're carrying the actual sensor, I take it. We tagged along with the USGS as they installed sensors to study our ever-changing coasts. We can look at areas that have increased of rates of sea level rise right now, uh, relative sea level rise, like Louisiana. Well, Louisiana is a place where, you know, over the last hundred years, we have shoreline measurements and we see that the long-term rate of shoreline change is six feet per year, and we expect that to continue or increase uh, as sea levels increase as well. 
even after Ian weakened, erosion impacted the coast from South Carolina all the way up to Toms River, New Jersey. And remember, that's a community that was devastated by Hurricane Sandy just a decade ago. They certainly know the challenges of rebuilding after erosion. We lost almost two billion in rateables on houses that were gone after Sandy. And as I said, we spent $750,000 the last two years to repair any damage to our dunes. Proving just how cost-effective beach nourishment can be. But back in Daytona Beach, erosion has won this battle. Nearly 50 homes and more than a dozen high-rise condo buildings have been evacuated, likely for good. There is a distinct possibility that one or both of these structures may collapse in some part. While the battles will be lost to the relentless ebb and flow of our coastlines, it's a war, albeit a costly war, that they hope one day to win, to preserve those beautiful beaches.